Hey guys, how you doing? You know, you'll see on the title of this video it says Comic Master, right? Paul Pope, Heavy Liquid. Now, who is a master, right? That's subjective, okay? I'm not just gonna say Will Eisner is the master or freaking Harvey Kurtzman's a master or whatever. There is, in my opinion, this is my opinion, that's why you're watching this channel. My opinion, there's certain masters. I'm gonna put him, Paul Pope, in the master category, okay? He's up there with Wally Wood, with Alex Toth, with all those guys, okay? Now, does he have that library of work? No. But can he do that? Does he know comics? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna put Paul Pope in the master category. That's what this whole section is, is who are the masters? This is a guy you study. This is not just a guy who you know put, puts out a paycheck. This is a guy who knows the genre, the lexicon, the freaking production of comics. We're gonna talk about Paul Pope, okay? Paul Pope and Heavy Liquid. Uh, I just reread this two days ago, and it is really freaking good. It's just really freaking good. Um, he's known for, you know, his big things. This was published by Vertigo. It originally was gonna be uh, by um, uh, Japanese manga, uh, Kadanchi, uh, Kadanchi, what is it called? Brr, bu, 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 bu. Um, oh, Kodan Kodansha, yeah, Kadansha. It was gonna be Kadansha, it turned into Vertigo. Um, he's also known for a hundred percent. He did Batman, a Batman trade. Where is it? Right there. Um, he did, he's done a, a number of little things. This is one of his first. This is, I would say, the watershed moment. This is where people are like, what? His brushwork, his typography, his production design sense, the, the angles, the camera, the compositions, the fisheye lens stuff, the line work, the brushwork. Paul Pope is, he's a comic master, okay? I don't care what you say. If you don't know Paul Pope, you gotta get his stuff. This book is really good. There's just some ideas in here. Um, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna go into this. I can't stop gushing about Heavy Liquid. It is this futuristic, noir future with you know art influences and a caper and this Heavy Liquid, which is kind of this alien drug you know, and what is it really made out of, and how does it work? And you have the main character, Mr. S, who is this, I think, surrogate for Paul. I mean, it looks like him. You know, all very designery, very kind of hip, New York fashion. Um, and he's this uh, kind of a tracer, internet, you know, tracker guy. And uh, it's globe trotting. I mean, it is a good freaking story. There's other languages, there's cultures, there's going to Paris, there's, you know, Puerto Ricans, there's, you know, Japanese. It's really good. It's really good. And it's well thought out, expertly made. It's a freaking masterpiece. I'm calling it that, okay? It's just one of the books you got to get. You got to, you got to get Paul Pope. You got to have him in your library, okay? Would love to see it like an an artist edition oh my gosh because i he still does stuff on paper so it would i would love to see that so uh scott dumnier if you're watching <laughs> or if you have scott dumnier's information get him on the board okay let's dive down and talk about paul pope okay ladies and gentlemen here we are looking at heavy liquid um such a good book i just want to give you guys a few a little few moments here to take a look at what's going on inside here um i don't know what printing this is but i'm sure it's slightly different maybe now yeah look at that 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 is that is freaking the main character that's mr s um and he mentions that he kind of tailored him after kind of a mick jagger you know type of a, a look um this 
was, this is a hardcover at 40 bucks. Um, you could find it cheaper. And I like this little embossed. I don't know if you can tell the embossed cover here, but it's really nice. Um, so that's kind of neat. A little extra, little, little goody. Uh, and there's a beautiful, beautiful guy. He's into uh, skating now, I think, a lot. Okay, check it out. Paul Pope. This is Bad A. I love, I love this red, by the way. So you'll notice a couple things. The production is all done um, with these like three tones, you know, and I really like the, the color scheme. I really like that and how he uses this. You know, it's a restriction on the color, but I think because of that restriction, it really pops out. Um, and as I work on my book, I think about that a lot. Like originally I was gonna make a black and white and then I went to two color and now I'm like almost at full color and there's some great things about it, but also because it's wide open now, um, it's not as powerful, I think, you know? So when you limit your palette, you can kind of make things pop a little bit more. Um, just, I love this kind of stuff. Uh, main character, S, you know, Luna, a friend of his. Um, the stuff, this is the heavy liquid, you know, and then the, these are the clowns, these, uh, these characters. I love this panel here too. We're just gonna go through this somewhat um, in a decent fashion here. And let me just go like that a little bit so we don't have too much light on the book. In fact, what I'm gonna do is go like that, booyah. Hopefully that works out for everybody. Um, so I love the colors. Again, you'll see a lot of line work. There's a lot of modern artists and artists nowadays that are using a lot of brush, which he uses, of course. And I feel like he is the one now that is um, or at least the modern artists that really are known for their brushwork and this very organic kind of um, a way of doing line. Also, he incorporates the sound effects into the art really well with a very clear style and um, part of the art. It's not necessarily clean, you know, but I like it. And um, I think that's the way to go. It's not, um, you know, illustrated out, um, which is cool. Again, a lot of like fish eye kind of warped uh, pers um, perspective, which I dig. The story starts out with this character, Mr. S. He is kind of a, you know, like I was mentioning before, like an internet tracker type guy who finds people almost like a bounty hunter in a way. Not really a bounty hunter, just more of like a finder. And he stole this stuff called heavy liquid, which when you burn, turns into this black milk that he then can put in his ear. And it kind of enhances his, um, enhances his senses, gives him some sense of invulnerability and is addictive. And so here, his friend Luna is making the last batch and then she is out. She is out of this business and this racket. And he's just kind of a bit of a, a dummy, so to speak. Love this work. Again, Just I just love the buildings. I would love to see the kind of the reference he was using and where he's getting this stuff. But um, it's just a lot of fun. You'll see this stuff. Again, I see a lot of people kind of aping this. But he was the first one. You know, this was in, I think it was 2000. Um, let me double check. No, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, yeah, no, 2000. So this is around the same time as actually Powers, which we're also talking about. So yeah, around the same time of Powers, Kabuki, Top 10, you know, Alan Moore's uh, ABC Comics, all that stuff, Vertigo's publishing this. You know, Paul Pope is heavily influenced by manga, huge manga fan, knows comics, you know, really incorporating this you know, bohemian uh, world traveled idea, very uh, global in, in the view of, of life and stuff. And you see that very fit, um, aware of fashion and that kind of stuff. So he's being chased by these guys that are called the clowns. I love this panel. I just love the way he's coming through the, through the parked traffic and he's just coming out with this really really stylish suit 
you know, gun and he's got this Salvador Dali war, you know, mask or something. Uh, it's kind of a neat, uh, not Salvador Dali, I'm sorry, Picasso um, kind of mask, which I thought was, was kind of a really cool, weird idea. Um, just really neat, like, angles and stuff. I mean, it's not real, it's got this really cool expressionist quality that that I like, that I sometimes when I'm doing my work, I feel chicken to do because I feel like it'll look wonky, but he pulls it off so well. And it, it just, yeah, man, I mean, he's not using rulers here. None of this is ruled up. The only thing that's rulered is the panels, borders. You know, none of this is ruled up. Maybe, maybe that line, maybe that line, but none of this here is ruled up. This is just him just using the brush and there's something really kind of liberating and cool about that. I really dig it. Um, I want to incorporate more of that in my own work. It's kind of a Grand Central Station, looks like area. Uh, I don't know if he's lived in New York. I think he has though. And there's definitely kind of a New York vibe in a lot of this. So here he is, he's gonna put in the new uh, the drug for the first time. And we get visually kind of a sense of what's going on in, in his, what it does to you. and kind of the feelings and, and thoughts. Uh, really cool suit he's got. That's a great, a great image. Hope you guys can see that well, do that. So this is just, again, I really like the colors too. I haven't seen a comic like this before where you have these pinks and purple and fuchsia uh, colors, violets, uh, and then even maybe kind of more of an indigo in here. And it's just kind of a neat, palette um and also the line work i mean i think everything is toned even the blacks are not really black they're just like a deep a deep indigo um which i think is is also kind of adds to it a little bit now he's meeting you know and the story goes where um he's gonna meets this these Chinese operatives that want to ha use him to go find somebody, uh, find an artist in Paris to build a sculpture for this super wealthy, powerful person who's kind of a mysterious guy. And that person, this person that he is to find, this artist, the best artist in the world, the sculptor, happens to be an ex-girlfriend, right? Who used to be kind of in his crew, who knows all about the heavy liquid, right? And so now he's on the trail of finding his ex, basically, um, and what's that gonna be about. And again, I really like this. This is a really kind of cool idea where he points out the accessories and clothing items of the characters. Now remember, this is in the future, so we get to see you know, the jagger, the cut, you know, the haircut, how much does that cost? You know, the, the Kirby fish, fish scale shirt, you know, 1,760 bucks, the leather jeans, colonial boots, the skull face mask, all these things. It's just kind of a neat little like addition, which I think is just kind of fun. I like that kind of stuff. So this book is just really well done. It's a fun story. It is definitely kind of a caper, you know, globe trotting. He's gonna wind up going to Paris. He's using this kind of, kind of like an internet type of a device to, to scour through you know, online, finding people, finding them, where were they last, and kind of like using that to track them down. And so he winds up going to Paris. Look at that, this, this is really neat. Yeah, this is a really cool panel. Uh, and he does a great way of just adding this texture, you know? He's not putting a, just a dry brush, or anything like that. He's putting little small individual little nicks and lines and things, which is a really cool effect. It, it gives it more it, more organic and kind of a little more real than just like a slap down thing. So that's another idea to steal, you know, to kind of use and be inspired by. That's what I read this for, and it's really neat. Um, I love that panel. I love the way that jump. Uh, he does great action. And you can see some of the manga kind of influences, some of the speed lines and things like that. And remember, in 2000, it wasn't quite as popular as now. I really like this frame, too. This is a really cool panel. That explosion right there. Um, and then he creates these little gadgets in the future. He does that a lot, too, with the Batman comic. The Batman he did, which maybe we'll do another episode with that. 
uh, he created Batman all these little gadgets and stuff. So he's got this uh, inventor kind of tinkerer quality to him, uh, Paul Pope, which is really neat. And then, so uh, yeah, he's traveling. So yeah, I think this is uh, all that really needs to be said. It's very good, it's quirky, some great little fun characters. It's very visual arresting and some really neat, look at that, that's a really cool one too. This is a fun story. I mean, this is like proper comics. This guy knows comic books. I'm putting him as a master, man. I'm putting him there as he's up there with, with. you know, look at that. Look at that lettering. Um, he also did most recently this Battling Boy, which is a really fun kind of um, sci-fi story. And I think it's published by uh, First Second. Um, well, maybe we'll talk about that too. So look at this, it's a great page. Just love those lines, love the brushwork. Really fun, really fun stuff. Okay, so this is the book. This is Heavy Liquid. I think I've shown you enough to hopefully get you turned on by it. Um, check it out. Uh, feel free to, you know, subscribe to the channel, tell your people about it, let other people subscribe, build this community up and I can share more and more videos. I'm doing it twice a week. Hope that's okay. Um, you know, comment below. Let me know what you guys think of this. And um, feel free to um, pass along. Thanks a lot, you guys. Have a good one and take care.